All right, in this lesson, we are gonna walk you through a comprehensive example for the weighted average method. So what's different between this and maybe what you saw in the last lesson is that we actually are going to look at multiple quantities that we're gonna have to deal with, just like we do with the FIFO and LIFO. So let's get started with the example prompt for our weighted average example. So company A tracks the number of units purchased and sold throughout the year, but applies its inventory costing method at the end of each period, hence the periodic inventory system. Given the information below, calculate the goods cost of goods available for sale, ending inventory, and cost of goods sold using the weighted average method. So we're given a table here with all this data. The nice thing about this table, it's organized by date, so it makes it a little bit easier as we start to do some of this other steps. All right, so let's move in to step number one. So the step number one is we're gonna to need to calculate goods available for sale. Now, the way that we calculate goods available for sale is that we need to take the number of units that we have or had during the year and multiply it by its cost to us, the company. So notice here that we have beginning inventory and we have two purchases. So we really have three lines that we uh, care about. The rest of the lines we don't care about because those don't represent inventory that we had or have currently, all right? So we're just looking at beginning inventory and purchases. So if I uh, multiply across, I'm gonna get 2,000 times 40, which is gonna give me $80,000. And then for July 13th, I've got 6,000 times 44, which gives me 264. And then uh, 8,000 units at $50 a piece gets us $400,000. So if I add up all three of those numbers, I get $744,000. So our goods available for sale, so goods available for sale equals 744000 thousand dollars and again that's one of the answers that we need but that's also what we're going to be using to calculate ending inventory so goods available for sale seven hundred and forty four thousand dollars all right moving on to step number two we need to calculate the average cost of inventory so the average cost of inventory because we are using the weighted average so what it, so the first question i would ask ourselves as we try to calculate our weighted average cost is what is the amount of inventory that is available for sale. So how many units did we have available for sale during the year? So we're going to look at our chart here. And yes, we did do the calculations from a cost perspective, but now we're going to do that same calculations from a unit perspective. So in this case, we have purchases of 8,000, we have purchases of 6,000, and then we have beginning inventory of 2,000. So 2,000 plus 6,000 plus 8,000 gives us 16,000 units. So once we have that, now we can calculate our weighted average cost. To do that, we're gonna use our equation that we learned in the last lesson. We're gonna take our cost of goods available for sale divided by the number of units available for sale, and that's gonna give us our weighted average cost. So our cost of goods available for sale, we calculated in step number one, which is $744,000. And we're gonna divide that by the number of units available for sale. In this case, 16,000 units. When we do that calculation, we get 46,000, sorry, $46.50. Now, how do we know if that's kind of in the ballpark? Well, what I would do is I would look at that number against all of my unit costs. Now, obviously, if I have unit costs that are rising, it should be in the middle of the lowest cost and the highest cost. So in this case, I got 4650 and notice my lowest cost is 40, my highest cost is 50, and this 4650 lands somewhere in the middle. It doesn't have to be exactly in the middle because we have a weighted average. There's more $50 units than there are $40 units because we have 8,050, 2,040. But notice that that 46 is kind of in the middle. That's how I know that I've kind of done it right. So if you're wondering, did I do this right? That number should kind of be in the middle of all of your costs, all right? So my weighted average cost is $46.50. Let's move on to step number three. In step number three, we're gonna apply the weighted average to all items sold. So how many units did we sell? Well, we sold 1,000 units. 
we sold 3,000 units, and we sold 5,000 units. So total, 5,000 plus 3,000 plus 1,000 is 9,000 units. So now that we have the number of units that we sold and the weighted average cost, we can then multiply those two to get our cost of goods sold. So we get something that looks like this, 9,000 units times 4650 gives us a cost of goods sold of 418,500. So 418,500 dollars is going to be our cost of goods sold. Now moving on to step number four, we need to calculate our ending inventory. So we know what our goods available for sale are, 744,000. We know what our cost of goods sold is, 418,500. Those are the two things, two of the three things that the question's asking for us. The last one is the ending inventory. So to calculate the ending inventory, we know that we can use this equation that we've used all along in all of these videos. We can take the goods available for sale cost-wise, which was $744,000, and subtract it from our cost of goods sold that we just calculated, $418,000. $500, and that's gonna give me an ending inventory of 325,500. So our ending inventory is $325,500, and that gives us our third answer for the questions that are asked in this problem. So that's kind of how we do the weighted average. So I know I went kind of quick, but at the end of the day, all we're doing is we're trying to figure out what is our goods available for sale in cost and number of units, once we do that, we can calculate our weighted average cost. Once we have that weighted average cost, we can apply that to all the units that we sold. So we're giving all 9,000 units the same cost. 9,000 times 4,650 gives us our 418,500. And so if we had 744,000 and we sold 418,500, that means the rest, 325,500, must have been still in inventory. So that's how we get to this answer. And that is a look at the weighted average costing using the periodic inventory system example. So hope you enjoyed this lesson. Hope you actually enjoyed all the lessons associated with inventory evaluation. We're going to do some a little bit of a different thing here in the next couple of lessons, but we wanted to make sure that you had a good understanding of FIFO, LIFO, and weighted average. So until next time, we'll see you in the next video. Hey guys, if you like this video, make sure you press the like button below. And if you're looking for worksheets that go along with all of these lessons, head over to my website at patrickleemsa.com or click in the link in the far right. And I've got your next lesson right over here. So just click that link and it'll take you to that video. So until then, we'll see you in the next lesson.